Good afternoon, this is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If this video is helpful, please like my video, send me your nice comments. Most of all though, subscribe and share. I greatly appreciate your subscriptions. Um, remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next to them, be the first to you. So we're gonna show you how to fix some stuff right here on this Jeep Grand Cherokee that we're working on. This particular one is a 2005. Uh, first year of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and if you can tell by the side there, it's a really nice truck, very worth putting the money into. We're going to do an axle on this, and, and I'm not sure how this video is going to break up, but we got a blown out axle boot, so we're going to replace that. Um, we're also going to be removing the front differential in it, so if this video doesn't include that, you can look for it on my thing. Um, so when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm going to show you how to take out this axle, because that's the most important thing. And then it might lead into me doing the differential. I don't know if I'm going to break it up or how I'm going to do it, but obviously you don't need to know that. You want to reach out to me, hit me up on Facebook under Clay's AC and Auto Repair. Uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions if I can. You leave questions in the comments. I try to get to them. Um, and I just try to show you how to do things, and I'll show you how to work. So the first thing that we obviously did, remove the 19-millimeter studs that hold on the wheel. Um, now we're going to remove uh, the tie rod and i'm going to show you a little trick on removing that without actually breaking it so we'll stay tuned for that so the next thing we did was we took a 21 millimeter we took off our nut for our tie rod now we're going to grab a big hammer now we're going to take our big sludge hammer and we're going to hit right here what we don't want to do is destroy this bushing and this outer tie rod is actually very good and stiff so we want to keep it that way we don't want to use a pickle for it because that'll break the casing on here so we're going to strike it as hard as we can right here and Jeff is going to hold the camera and hopefully all we have to do is get back we're going to heat it up on the inside and then it just pops out okay I was barely applying pressure on this knuckle to push this up it just heated this up and sent shock waves through there and then allowed that to go up and out Now we've, took it, we've taken out our two 14 millimeter bolts that house our brake caliper. And just as a little side note, a little trick, you take a flathead screwdriver, put it in the cooling fans of that, give it a little tug, and that's gonna slide your brake pistons back. And that's gonna make the caliper come off a lot easier and also make it better for installation because we're not replacing the brake pads on this. If we were, just as another side note, if you were gonna replace the brake pads and rotors, before you take the caliper off, take the hammer, strike it in between the brake pad and the cal and the rotor and push in your caliper pistons the reason that's good is then when you're having to push in the caliper pistons you can push them both in at the same time simultaneously and when you go to reinstall your new brake pads with your rotor you don't have to dink around with using a c-clamp or anything to push in your pistons you can do that you just put this inside here once you get it drove into the middle there, just hold pressure against it and eventually it's going to work its way back if your brake caliper is good, just so you know. Now we're going to remove our 221 millimeter that hold our caliper bracket on. I recommend you use an air tool for this. Now we've taken our 36 millimeter nut off of here. Um, we have put our bolts for our caliper bracket back inside the caliper bracket itself wherever I set it, right down there on the ground just to keep them out of the way. Uh, note, when you go to reinstall this, look up the torque specifications. It's very important. This is a bolt-in hub, and you will crush the hub if you over-torque this nut here. It's probably 150 foot-pounds, could be 85, somewhere right around there, but, it, but it's important to retorque this to proper specifications, or at least don't over-tighten it, because you'll press it together. Okay, next we're gonna take the 18 millimeter nut that holds our upper control arm together, and then we're going to simply strike it the same way we struck our get that off of there now one thing that's important is you really want to use air for this because if you spin it slow with the ratchet more than likely you're going to ruin this ball joint because it's going to start spinning inside there so it's best to have air to be able to help with this or at least a half inch drive electric impact something that spins very quickly to drive that nut off of there and hopefully not spin that but obviously, you could, if you have a pass-through ratchet, you can hold the Allen wrench right here and spin that off too. That's probably like an eight millimeter, maybe 10 millimeter stud. You would hold that on if you have a ratcheting wrench 
just have a regular wrench, you can do it that way as well. I have also took penetrant and sprayed it on there. And then we're also gonna have to spray it on the wishbone here because we're not gonna be able to have our axle pass through here. If we were on the front differential, which is what I'm eventually gonna change in this, we don't really have to remove the axles. We would drop the differential down and then pop the axles out of the axle housing and put them back in before we put the differential back up, just as a side. Now we've got our upper ball joint released. Very simple, just like I showed you before. Now we've got also a 24 millimeter uh, socket on our lower wishbone. The hope is that this we take this out and then that gives us enough room to get the axle out once we pull the ball joint out, push the axle through, and then we'll pop out the axle. Now this nut was actually 13 16s, but if you notice, it's supposed to have grabbers on there. I don't think it's supposed to spin. It's supposed to have some kind of locking tab on it, but it didn't work. So it was 13 16 or 21 millimeters was loose on there, but I was able to hold it with the 21 millimeter just so you know. So before you're able to remove that bolt, you're gonna have to have a jack underneath there to jack it up to keep it centered because there's gonna be a lot of pressure on that and it's gonna to wanna to spring away from you. So jack it up and then you'll be able to use a punch or something to push your bolt out. Keeping in mind when you're jacking this up, not to put too much pressure on it because it'll allow it to come back up this way and put too little on there, you just basically jack it up to where that bolt, where you can take the bat, your other hand and move that bolt a little bit you know, it'll still move stiff and you might still have to push it out with a with an awl or something, but it'll be a lot easier that way. Don't do too much pressure. Now with pressure still applied to your lower control arm, you're gonna go ahead and take the 18 millimeter nut. You're gonna work the nut off in the back. And if you can tell mine's smoking, I had to use heat to heat this up, but if you're in a drier climate than we are in Michigan, you probably won't have that problem. And we're just gonna disconnect it from here. so the whole control arm can slide down. Okay, so now we're at the point where we need to release our axle from the transfer case, or the front differential, sorry. So we're gonna take a pry bar and we're gonna put it up in there and I'm not probably not gonna be able to get it to release showing you guys on the camera, but you wanna make sure that whatever you pry against has some girth, so you just don't wanna pry against anything. But I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna try to give it a couple little sharp little pushes with both hands so I can make it real quick and kind of just uh, a little visual of that. So I got the pry bar and I'm gonna quick, you know, jam it out of there. And then hopefully we can drop down the control arm far enough to be able to drop this part down far enough to be able to get the axle through the wishbone. Okay, I got a little bit too far ahead of myself. I should have took the axle out of the holder. How are you gonna do that? is you're gonna pull it forward, so you're gonna pull it down back this way, and then you're gonna cock it to the front so you can push it back, and then, so you can push it back that way a little bit, and then pull it this way, and then that'll allow the axle, when you pry to pop it out, pop out of there, it'll have space to go. Now we're getting close to getting this thing out of here, and I wanted to point something out. This locking ring, when you go to install this, this will snap into your uh, differential there. When you go to take it out, it is perfectly acceptable to take a pry bar and you'll get it up inside here, kind of at about this skew that I've got right here. And then you'll be able to hit that end with a mallet. You just wanna be careful not to damage your casing. When you go to install this, now you can't have it locked into the sleeve, but it has to go all the way down. So make sure that you notice the correlation and the difference between your differential where you take it out and where it ends up landing. I highly recommend it that if you get it in there and it won't go in all the way and you're trying to push it in there and it won't go in, do not hit on the rubber boot edge, okay? Because you'll break it. Just pull it back out all the way and then quick jam it in there one time one time one pop that's how they go be very very careful of that so in order to get that from out from underneath there i put my pry bar in there just like that and i got it up underneath that mount right there and i pried it down i'm sorry i couldn't make a video of it pried it down enough to sneak the center portion out and that is how you remove an axle from the front end of a Jeep Grand Cherokee.
Hopefully the video was helpful. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. Like me on Facebook under Clay's AC and Auto Repair. Like my videos. Most of all, share and subscribe. Remember, don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. God bless. Have a great day.